All right, so welcome. Today we're gonna take a look at just a hypothetical portfolio and just do something a little different in terms of like what would I do or some thoughts and ideas from a portfolio segment. So I'm gonna try and throw up some more of these types of videos for you guys in the future, just kind of overviewing kind of a basic management things for some portfolio. Uh, keep in mind none of these are recommendations to buy, sell, or trade any stocks or options. Just again, some uh, hypothetical things you could uh, look at and think about as you're looking at doing some trades. All right, so let's Let's kick things off um, and uh, as we look at these things you can see like right now today's a pretty nasty down day uh, you could see this account let's go into this account right here uh, this account is down about two thousand dollars a lot of this is also from the QQQ position here that I have uh, because this is a long portfolio so I always kind of have those those are things that are constantly continuing to repeat time and time again looking to redo those um, often in other words you're, you're kind of trying to keep the trend going. So with today's down market, you can see a lot of the long portfolios will get hit. So anything here, right here, it'll get hit and you'll have a little bit of trouble uh, with, with a lot of these segments. Swing directionals may or may not get hit. You can see some stuff will and some stuff will not as much. It just depends on the allocation. And then there might be some weekly trades um, as well. Like you might have the McDonald's, Procter & Gamble. Uh, and then here's a speculative trade. You can see this one's working out for four bucks, you know, it's holding kind of. So anyway, my point being is, is that you want to allocate things in different resources. So if I'm looking to be a long-term investor, right? If I'm a long-term investor, what is it that I could do in a situation when the market is kind of down uh, quite a bit like this? So you can see right now on the SPY, we are down about 7.99 points. If you look at it right here, we're pretty much down. We're starting to kind of roll and grind back up a little bit. Um, so I've already done some stuff in my live account. So this is kind of a, a paper account. So what is it that we could do? Um, so if I'm looking to allocate, and let's say just for hypothetical sake, I have more cash on the sidelines. Um, if you're looking to allocate, there's a way to start getting long on some of these positions. And we talked about it before. So you can see my SPY position here. What I've been doing is slowly adding a few little verticals here. Um, uh, with options. So here's another um, couple of verticals. So here I buy one and I sell this one. So you can see some of these are, you know, in total right now, that, that whole position is down $328. I basically have 28 delta. So not a huge overall position. But what I could do is I could keep adding to this a little bit. And it's something that, look, if I'm long the market, you know, March, April, if I'm looking for something like that, you could see some of these I put on the other day and yeah, they're still down, but I'm putting on small positions, you know, 300 bucks here, a hundred bucks here, a hundred bucks there, and it'll slowly start adding up. So there's about $1,800, $1,900 worth of capital. So what I can do is go ahead and do another little spread and keep adding to it. I could do 150 days if I'm really scared, say, hey, let me give the market a little bit of breathing room. It could keep going down. Um, and then I could buy back into it uh, later on, you know, keep going into it. But I got to have enough cash to be able to sustain this for the next three to four months to keep buying little spreads like this. Um, and the more it goes down, the more I'm kind of trying to buy into it, right? If it goes down too, too far, or too fast, I could also give it like one or two day breathing room and just say, hey, let me slow down my buying. But you think about it like a 100 days to go, if you can buy for the next 100 days, and you take out your calculator. So let's say I'm buying a spread for uh, $200 and I'm gonna do it about 75 times. That's $15,000 position. So it's not too bad from a long investment uh, perspective. Um, so anyway, and then from another longer term perspective is, remember if it keeps going down, okay, as a long investor, what are you doing? You're just holding anyway. So isn't it better to buy it when the prices are lower? Yeah, you just don't know when the bottom is. So I'm slowly nibbling. And then as it starts grinding up, all those positions will start working. Now, if they don't, what's going to happen is, let's say they don't work. What am I going to do? I'm just going to roll those spreads to a further expiration. So let's say this, uh, some of these spreads at 115 days to go, they, they have trouble when it gets to about, let's say, 40 days, because I'm using like a 40 to 60 day as a baseline then what I'll do is I'll maybe roll those two, you know, further out duration, like 180, 150. Again, you're just rolling them back out. You're just trying to keep that delta intact. So let's go to about 150 days. That should be enough for now. And uh, we will go in right here by, and I'll just do a two point wide spread. It's kind of close to at the money. And the reason I do that is because I don't get a big theta right there and the vega is also very neutral if i go too far out of the money there's a little bit of a problem i could go 
here, let's see. Because if I go four point spread, you know, there's $232. And if you kind of cautious, let's go three point spread. So somewhere right there where my theta is not too bad, but I'm still looking for upside moves. So about $200 uh, spread. Go ahead, pop something like that in. And we'll let that sit, that order cook. And then you could start looking for other opportunities. Look, if you're super, super worried about the market, obviously you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't put on that single spread right there that I just did because this one could still keep going down, but I'm putting on $200 here, $200 here, $200 here. I'm adding to it um, as a long-term investor. So now my delta has increased to about 30, okay? So this is something that you could continue to play with as you build into a SPY position. You might be wondering, well, what's my plan if it does keep going down? Well, number one, I could roll. Number two, what I would do is as this keeps going down, um, as I start putting on some of the next positions, I might actually, because what's going to happen is, is as this keeps going, my negative theta is going to start picking up speed, okay? So there it is. You can see it would be negative five. Right now it's negative four, so it's not as big of a problem. Uh, but I, what I'll probably start doing is somewhere around, you know, 60 days. I, th this isn't something I would do 100 days out because there's not enough, there's not a lot of quick data, but somewhere around like a 60 day or a 39 day. Again, I'm just trying to create some short vega now uh, after the market goes dropping. And I'll do one right now just to show you. Maybe around a 20 delta, maybe 15. Uh, you know, what I'll do is I'll sell, uh, start doing a mix of selling vertical puts. So here we'll do um, 418 and let's say 415. And now what you'll see is that theta will drop from a negative four. It's going to drop to a negative three. I could probably even do two contracts right off to the start. Um, usually I don't like to do them all at, at once, you know, but once you start doing more and more of them, that theta will start going down. So I could slowly start shifting a little bit more to selling uh, puts to kind of kill a little bit of that um, theta. Uh, but then my delta, of course, will increase from a 30 to uh, 41. So understand that when you're starting to add, as I start getting into this, I'm going to go in and start putting them in in this way soon to start kidding, cutting that that theta. So right now I'll do kind of one, you know, and we could add to it over the next day or two or a couple of days, uh, depending if the market does continue to sell off. Uh, if I need more theta, I could just spread these wings, um, the this, this spread a little bit wider. So that would mean... I'm at a 420, 415. Let's see here. Let's make it get rid of these so we have more space. There we go. So yeah, so I would do it like that and that'll bring in a little more theta. So basically the January's 28th and could do one of those, boom. And you wanna be careful when you do this because there's, you can see I got a lot of trades going. I don't wanna overlap the trades, but I know that my put side is gonna be my, um, where you'll see right here, these put sides is going to be uh, the ones with positive theta. I'm selling verticals, the call side I'm buying. So as long as they don't overlap, I'm fine. And I've got a bunch of them in there. So yeah, it may sound confusing, but um, this is kind of the, the real way that you're looking to do things. Not not like buying a single call or something like that. That's, that's for other stuff. But if you're looking for a real portfolio management kind of concept, you're spreading things all over the place. This is the way it's really done. So I wanted to start sharing these kinds of videos with you guys um, as how you start building and accumulating positions because a lot of people don't get it. They don't understand it. They're piling in like 10 or 20 contracts all at once. Uh, but this is how you start building it out a uh, little bit at a time. You're starting to look at, okay, let me nibble a little more. Let me nibble a little more. And what you'll see is, you know, if you've got enough cash on the sidelines, you're fine. You're okay. You're like, okay, well, I could do this for the next 100 days and I'm good. So if this market continues to fall for the next 100 days, that'll be a little more of a problem. But I know within those 100 days, I'll probably get a little swing up and then I could get rid of the puts um, and take some profits there. So anyway, we'll get there uh, eventually. But I will want to share with you this thought and insight. So if you enjoy this video and you like this kind of stuff, just let me know right in the comments. We can continue to start building out more of these kinds of positions and showing you some other stuff that I have going on here on the simulated account. This is a lot of the stuff that I deal with when it comes to uh, the coaching people I work with on a day-to-day -day basis and just some people that I work with also on the mentoring side as well. So thanks for joining me. Enjoy the rest of the week ahead and I will see you on the next one.